Okay, so I'm a person that absolutely loves mega events in comic books. Ever since I started collecting them, I've been someone who has to pick up all the side stories, offshoots and companions because it adds so much to the overall storyline in my opinion. Civil War is actually my favourite series of all time because the unique points of views and perspectives that happen to the characters really help to enrich in and tell this overarching narrative. The end feels all the better for it because you know the journey that the heroes and villains have gone on and what it took to get to that point. Now this to me is the reason why the MCU Infinity Saga works so well and all of the origin stories, side chapters and post credit scenes culminated in Avengers Endgame which I feel is the most ambitious crossover ever since Archie vs the Predator. Now in the movie is a standout moment that gives me goosebumps every time and it's a scene that had audiences in the theatre going Well not me because it's heavy spoilers and I was the guy doing this. But why does the scene work so well and why is it something that hits home every single time that we watch it? Well that's what we're going to be breaking down in this video and if you love it 3000 then make sure you smash the thumbs up button. We do videos on our favourite film moments every single week and if you think we're worthy to be in your subscription feed then we'd absolutely love it if you hit that button too. If this is your first time here then welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul aka your friendly neighbourhood spoiler man, now let's get into why this scene in Avengers Endgame is absolutely perfect. Ok so Mjolnir is an item in the Marvel Universe that no mere mortal can wield. Ever since its first appearance in 2011's Thor, it's been held in high regard due to those only deemed worthy being able to lift it. Did it work? Throughout the saga it's been something that's aided the god of thunder on his many adventures, but in the main timeline the item was destroyed by Thor's sister Hela. Because of this he had to go through his own redemption arc in both Ragnarok and in Infinity War in which he gained Stormbreaker and doomed the universe to death. You should have gone for the head. Cheers mate, however upon journeying back in time, Thor ended up taking Mjolnir which not only showed that he was still worthy, but it also set the pieces in place for us to see that Cap was too. Now Steve is a character that very much represents the best of what humanity can be. I could do this all day. When we met him in the first Avenger, he was someone who showed us that though we might not have physical strength, our will can go a long way and it's what's inside that counts. Now not all of us can end up getting the super soldier serum but stories like episode 1 of what if showed that no matter what because of his character Steve was always destined to be a hero. One of the reasons that him wielding the hammer works so well is because it very much bridges the gap between man and god and shows us first hand that we have the power within ourselves to achieve that status. After all many of the gods that we've seen in the MCU are what you would call petty and squabbling self centred sociopaths and Steve Rogers lifting this cements that we can be better than the ones that rule us. But it's not just that that makes the scene pop off and I doubt many of you even considered it when watching it fly into Cap's hand. What we love about this scene is that it actually shows something that we all suspected since Age of Ultron and that is that Steve Rogers is worthy. Him unleashing this feels like a payoff 10 years in the making and it makes Cap one of the top characters in the Marvel Universe. However the build up to it is also deeply layered in specific iconography and it also mirrors the scene in Infinity War which makes the moment hit home even harder. In that we watched as Thor drove Stormbreaker into Thanos' chest instead of his head. Because of this the villain was able to carry out the snap which destroyed half of all life in the universe and left the world in a state of grief for 5 solitary years. The first hour of Endgame very much dealt with this morning and though the heroes managed to kill Thanos early on, they still ended up as a loss and in no better of a position than they'd been at the end of the snap. Though this opening act was slow paced, it was important to have this room to breathe after the almost non-stop action that Infinity War was and it showed our heroes all coping with loss in lots of different ways. That's why Ant-Man's return was so powerful as it offered a glimmer of hope in a desolate and bleak future that allowed the heroes to get back what they'd once lost. We watched as the Avengers went back in time to collect the Infinity Stones but in doing so they ushered forth a worse version of Thanos who was now hell bent on destroying all life. Thanos journeyed to the present and knowing that he was out to destroy everyone this time, the stakes felt infinitely higher. 
I think it's safe to say that he smashed Tony Cap and Thor like you should smash that like button. And watching the three most popular Avengers getting the crap kicked out of them made you realise how low humanity's chances were. I can't overstate how much Thanos whoops their ass and it reminded me of that time Stone Cold showed up and just started stuttering everyone. Just look at the guy, just stuttering everyone non-stop. Stone Cold Steve stop stuttering everyone please, let the, let the lads live. Now left with just Thor, Thanos completely wails on him and when the former calls Stormbreaker to his hand, Thanos catches it midair and starts to drive it into his chest. This is a reverse to how things were at the end of Infinity War and just as it seems like Thor is about to have a heart to heart with Stormbreaker, we get one of the biggest saves since Stone Cold Steve Austin saved the WWF from the WCW. God damn King, look at him go my god. Now the hammer goes to Cap's hand and he catches it, showing the shield in all its glory before facing down against Thanos to take him head on. This actually capitalises on a trope in TV and film known as Deus Ex Machina and in case you don't know, this translates to mean God from the machine. It's typically used to describe a character just appearing out of nowhere to save one that's in great peril and it's appeared in lots of movies and shows. The worst version I can think of is when the T-Rex just completely shows up out of nowhere without making a noise at the end of Jurassic Park. I say worst, but yeah, I do like this moment to be fair. And there is a reason that this has become a trope because it works so well in dramatic scenes. Why it feels way better here though, and more than just a cheap gimmick, is because it combines several elements in order to pull off a big reveal that builds upon the past of the MCU and adds to Cap's character as a whole. Not only are we seeing something that was teased all the way back in Age of Ultron, but we're also witnessing Cap step up to the next level in order to go toe to toe with the most powerful being in the universe. Cap holding back Thanos' hand in Infinity War came as a huge shock to the Mad Titan and this builds upon that to show that not only can he go toe to toe with him, but that he can also put him on the back foot. Watching him summon forth lightning and throw his hammer off the shield so that it knocks Thanos off balance is absolutely incredible and I love the way that Cap swings it around before hitting him in his ball sack of a chin. It's the first time in the fight that you really feel that the heroes have a chance and as Ivan Vonko said, if you can make God bleed, people will cease to believe in him. This was something that was shown in Infinity War when Tony went head to head with him and even though he threw everything he had at him just for a drop of blood, it did cement that it was possible to beat him. Though it's not highlighted in this fight, we also see that Steve has managed to cut Thanos in a similar place and it truly highlights what's to come. The scene is followed by the incredible Avengers Assemble moment and the payoff of this wouldn't work as well as it did without the setup here in which we see one man that symbolises the best of us standing against evil. The scene works because not only does it show us that those with the strongest wills can stand against a god, but it also highlights the journey that Cab has gone on to get to this point. He's a character that was deemed as someone who wasn't even worthy to join the fight when he first started, but now he's leading the front line against the ultimate force of destruction in the entire universe. It shows that the gap between God and man has grown significantly shorter and that we too are worthy to stand amongst them if we are pure of heart. Him being arguably the most human character of us all makes us get behind him and I feel like it's us hitting Thanos just as much as he is. It's an amazing moment that rightly made people cheer in the cinema upon seeing it for the first time and it's a scene that I go back to time and time again to remind me why I fell in love with the MCU. I can't overstate how much I get chills every time I watch this and it symbolises that within us all there's a hidden greatness that can come out at any moment. Cap was there when we most needed him and this scene is the perfect culmination of his story and the Infinity Saga as a whole. It's a moment for me that stands toe to toe with some of the best in cinema and I feel that it's absolutely perfect. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on this scene and if you agree with me or not. Avengers Endgame is filled with about well 50 moments like this so I'm sure I'll no doubt be back to talk about the film again in the future at some point so let me know below what you want to see next time. Just to let you know, we are running a competition right now and giving away three copies of the Zack Snyder DC Trilogy on the 30th of September. All you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the moment. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. 
If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of the perfect scene in X-Men First Class. We pointed out why we absolutely love the coin moment and all the build up to it that makes it really impactful. If not, then thank you for sticking through this video. I've been Paul, you've been the best and I hope to see you on the next one. Take care, peace.